Hi everyone, I'm Shauna, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a contentment topic. We're gonna to be talking about what I think is a barrier or a roadblock to contentment for myself, for a lot of people, not like the roadblock, but a roadblock. And that is the practice or habit of fixing ourselves with stuff. The practice of buying things to fix ourselves or perceived issues or problems that we see in ourselves. And I really hope in the co in the comments we can have a conversation about this. And I would love to hear some of your comments, perspectives, and your own experiences because I'm only talking from the place of you know one person myself. What I'm really hoping this video will do is to help us think about about how contentment it is and can be related to stuff more than like the physical thing and how purchases can help or hinder our own contentment. And I'm just hoping to hopefully share some new perspectives that you might not have thought about. There's two categories of things that we'll talk about in just a second. There's two kind of purchasing categories and I'll be more specific about that. I, when I was writing the script for this video, I went on this huge, this huge rant about advertising and the messages of beauty that have been communicated through advertising, both like print media, you know, magazines, television, commercials, but also social media ads and models and not just like runway models, but the models that we see modeling close to us wherever we shop. And what kind of riled me up about the beauty standards here is that I think a lot of women, women with an X, the, our lives have been inundated with these messaging, with these messages about beauty that I think at least some of these purchases, if you've ever made this kind of fix yourself with stuff purchase, I think some of it has to be or is probably maybe beauty related. The messaging about beauty is so toxic and so problematic across the board, even today. And there, I feel like there's just so much to say about it, both in terms of like size and height and race and age and people not feeling represented in beauty messaging. And so I feel like that has to be a separate topic because if I go into, if I go into just a little bit more, I'm going to, I'm going to pop off and even just like, oh my gosh. I also just want to say, like, there's nothing biological about being a woman. Like, there's not. And, like, ads portray gender essentialism all the damn time. I feel like that needs to be a separate video in itself, too, because I could pop off about that all day as well. I bring up beauty ads because, one, I think that some of these purchases that we might have made are beauty related. But, number two, I think one of the things that advertisements targeted to women have done is make women believe that they can fix themselves through buying things. Like a lot of ads and a lot of media have made women feel insecure about themselves and then sell them things to fix it with that. Okay, yeah, you need to remove your hair, but then like what if you have bumps from your hair and then you need to fix that too? Then you also need to make sure that that part that was bumpy is now not bumpy but also smooth and then you need like all of these things to be a woman and we all apparently should feel bad about ourselves for a myriad of reasons criticizing our hair to our nose our shoulders our freaking belly buttons it's just ridiculous i really really believe that the practice of buying of using stuff as a tool to fix ourselves like totally comes from advertising and the media and i think that's one thing that has stuck with a lot of us beyond the like damage to our collective self-esteem but like also to be clear the damage is not equal and so advertisements i feel like have taught us that we can purchase happiness and beauty and self-esteem and this is this is the area i want to talk about today so i personally noticed i was buying things to fix myself back in 2020. I did buy some things out of this like desperate desire to fix something I saw is wrong with myself. There was some things that were like truly like really desperate purchases. I bought super expensive skincare I couldn't afford because I was so insecure about my skin. <laughs> like would I see better results if I had clearer, smoother skin that was less scarred and less red? And like I had, you know, finished with my dermatologist at the time and there was like nothing she could really do about the redness. Like we had tried things 
And so I kind of felt like I was being sold false hope all the time or being sold hope to fix these problems with myself. I also bought clothes because I wanted to be perceived in a certain way. Clothing can be a great tool for confidence and self-esteem, but that's not the same thing as buying a blazer because you think you're not a serious person. There's a nuance here that I think is important. I think that if you don't normally wear blazers and then you start wearing them, true, some people might take you a little bit more seriously or they just might start seeing you differently. But for me, the distinction is like, it's like a band-aid. You don't have a permanent solution if you bought the blazer in like a shame or hate spiral. Even if other people see you differently, you won't see yourself differently because you have a blazer. Like you haven't done anything differently. Like you haven't changed your mindset or the way that you think or talk to yourself. You've literally just bought a blazer. That's not gonna change how you feel about yourself. Maybe temporarily, maybe when you wear it, but what happens when you take it off? What happens after five wears or 10 wears? Often like if we're in these like negative thought spirals, we might feel good for a while, but unless we change the way we think, we're not gonna not have them anymore. So eventually the blazer, if it's effective at all, its effectiveness will wear off, wear off. And you'll just continue to view yourself as you did before. And so I now wanna talk about the two types of purchases. And we'll start first with type one. And these are the standalone quick fixes. These are the things that we buy to fix ourselves, but like we're not making any changes anywhere. Like it's a buy and I'm not gonna change my life. And so these can be things like makeup or clothing or you know fashion items. It doesn't have to be that related. It doesn't have to be makeup or clothing or fashion. There's so many things that it could be. So technology or even food items can be in this category. And these I think are, are more likely to be like desperate impulse kind of purchases because they're, they're, they are the quick fix. I'll buy it and I'll be different. I'll buy it and somebody will see me differently. I'll buy it and things will just be different. And so these type of purchases don't require us to change our behavior or our life or our perspective or our mindset in any way. We're just different because we own a different thing. So for me, these kinds of purchases have included makeup. Something that used to get me all the time was foundation. I used to just like covet the newest next foundation because I was always thinking that there would be something to cover my acne scars better. That they would look less deep or my makeup would look less creased. I was trying to buy foundation to make my skin look better and there's only so much a foundation can do. Like the difference is gonna be in my skincare or in other things that would change my skin. And I was always like, maybe there'll be some new technology that will you know, make my scars look different. I have also bought a lot of clothes. I keep mentioning the professional clothing because this is one that has got me time and time again. <laughs> in terms of like, in like my professional life, I have always felt like unprofessional and unlikable. I always get comments about how serious I look and how like intimidating I look just like with people who've met me in real life and some of it is just like the way that I come across but also like just the way that I look standing doing nothing but also there's like gendered layers to that too if a man was standing there looking serious as well people wouldn't be like oh my god he's unapproachable they might think that like he was cool or serious I just look like a bitch because I'm a woman People assume I'm a bitch because I'm a woman. I felt like if I wore dress pants or a blazer or like a nice blouse, that people would take me more seriously. Or maybe that people would like me more if I dressed a certain way. And all of these things, I mean, the clothing was all about how other people view me. Like I was trying to make other people like me through my clothing. But in reality, like when I, look back it was always like people don't like me people don't like me people don't like me but like ultimately i didn't like myself like i felt like there was something wrong with me and so i needed to fix it no matter what it is if you're trying to change people's like if you're trying to feel better about yourself through how other people perceive you like if they perceive you differently if people really start loving you like oh my god shauna you're amazing you're cool you're likable 
will that actually change how I feel about myself? I don't know, because I think that we internalize stories about ourselves that just never go away. And I have evidence of people liking me. There's 4,000 people here on YouTube who are subscribed to me. That means that there's 4,000 people who like me enough to be subscribed. So there's like at least one piece of evidence that suggests that I am likable being myself, yet I still have this narrative in my mind. Really, no new blazer, no new cool shoe or workout gear or like you're not a bad bitch gym babe if you wear gym shark. People at work aren't going to take me more seriously or if they do, I'm not going to feel better about it by buying stuff. These things won't make a difference in your life or mine if we don't first change how we feel about ourselves. And that is so hard. Like I say, I say that like it's easy, but it's not. It's really hard to start loving ourselves and embracing ourselves as we are and believing that we are good enough as we are because we already have stories in our mind that tell us differently. And there's so much of the world that wants us to feel insecure because then we can spend our time and energy on criticizing ourselves, criticizing other women, and then trying to fix it and buy more things. These types of purchases can be really difficult to stop because we might not do it all the time. Like we might only make these kinds of purchases like once a year or maybe twice a year. And when we do, they could be a lot of money, but they could also be a little bit of money. Well, even if you're spending like $50 once a year on these kinds of things, the money at that point is not really important, but they're, they're feeding a narrative that is super toxic to ourselves, our personal development, and just our overall happiness and contentment. And these aren't things that we're lusting after, right? These aren't things that we're impulse buying. I mean, they could be, but not always. And these, this isn't like a new makeup release that we're just lusting after or wanting. These are purchases that hit a nerve at our very core, like of our be of very being, like of our biggest insecurities, that we might just do anything to have them go away or be different. That is what sucks us into buying the thing because maybe in our minds we genuinely believe we could be different if we had this thing or we just like need to do something and this is the something that we can do. I think the irony about this whole thing is that, and I'm only gonna use myself in this irony example because I really don't want anybody to feel like they're being attacked, but I have honestly said like I would do anything to have different skin. I've said this at certain points, like I was so desperate to fix it. However, the one solution that has been pegged to me or has been communicated to me by my dermatologist was laser. The only way to fix it is to get laser. And she even gave me the specific type of laser that I could use and you know, I went around and got a quote. And this is a legitimate solution that has been given to me by a skin professional. Yet I wasn't willing to do it. I mean, part of me, like part of it is expensive, but also like in one of those years I could have I mean, let's say pre no buy, I could have spent the fifteen hundred dollars on the laser instead of just buying crap. You know, I'm desperate to do anything, but like not actually anything. I just want it to be different now. And sometimes I know like I didn't want to put in the work. Buying things won't make me or you feel less shitty about ourselves. And buying things won't fix, like will not fix anything. And honestly, having this mentality that we're constantly thinking that we're broken or requiring fixing, that like who we are is just not good enough keeps us in this negative feedback loop and this negative framework. We will never be happy if we are constantly so negative about ourselves and thinking that all these things need to be changed. And I also think that they help play up or like promote these older narratives that we tell ourselves about ourselves. I'm not saying that you can't ever be insecure. No, Th like, no, <laughs> that's not it. But buying stuff to fix ourselves won't change anything. I said that like five times, I'm gonna say it again. It at the most will like maybe make us feel good for a day, but then like we're ultimately wasting our money. Unless like you bought something that you really, really love, but its purpose was to fix the thing. And so it's gonna be a little bit like a letdown or maybe like you're always gonna feel this way. Like you'll never change. Like you'll always be unlikable. And then we just defeat ourselves into believing that we will always be unlikable. How can we be happy with, with ourselves if we always feel like we need fixing? We can't, we can't. Feeling like crap about these th negative things about ourselves does you or me like 
no favors at all. Now, I'm gonna talk about number two. And this one I think is a little bit trickier because some of these things could actually be good, but we can get sucked in to them and just wanna buy stuff. So let me let's talk about it. Type two are behaviors or purchases that require a behavioral change. So this could be things like buying weights or buying workout equipment. It could also be things like buying hobby supplies or buying a book, self-development book or a course or a writing book or something like a planner. A planner requires you to fill it out. If you don't fill it out within a year, you could still, you know, keep going on it, but will you? Like if you have a half a half used planner, will you use it? Some of them, like if they're dated, then you just bought something that you've literally never used and you can't later. These are the things that actually require us to do something to see a change. So these aren't the quick fix. So as an example, if you buy a workout equipment of any kind, it requires you to work out. That would be probably a minimum of once a week. Or if you buy a writing course, like I've been thinking about buying, um, it requires you to write every day or once a week or however often that it is. All of these things that I've mentioned are good things. Working out, writing, reading, doing hobbies, whatever your hobby is. Or if you buy like a meditation app, great these things on the surface, they're great. And they're great ideas and they could be really great for you, for me, for investing in our mental health or our physical health, changing our habits to healthier or more positive ones. The problem here is will you use them? How many of you have bought a self-development book, like swearing up and down that you'll read it and then you don't, or bought workout equipment and then it's just sat there? or you bought a planner and you never used it. These things, I believe, are more expensive, even as a one-off purchase, than the, than the items that would typically fall into the first category. And so if the cost is greater, we can feel like we're making a really great change, like we're investing in ourselves, and that is exactly why we buy into it because we're investing in ourselves, we're making a change or developing a healthier habit. I think there is something empowering about deciding to make a change in your life and then doing it. But the not so good things about these purchases could be if they come from a I hate myself perspective or you just don't use them because you bought them just as a desire to change ourselves opposed to like an actual commitment to a new habit because I have at points felt so strongly about wanting to change something about myself or hating something about myself. I bought something that requires an action, but I was so caught up in this desire to change, I didn't really think beyond that. You know, there's like a trying to try or like a buying to buy. This is like a buying to not feel like shit, a buying to fix ourselves. And I think that these things can also backfire if we bought them and then we don't use them and then we see them lying around especially if the thing is really expensive like a treadmill it's like oh shit i just wasted 400 dollars on a treadmill now some of these purchases can be prevented and i think if you want to go for this kind of purchase because i'm not saying don't ever purchase anything in this category ever one of the things that i've taken out myself is to build the habit first before buying the thing so do body weight exercises or workouts for 30 days before buying the at-home set like do you even will you even work out at home i do work out but at the gym maybe you buy a 30-day membership at the gym opposed to a full year membership and then after your 30 days if you feel like you've built up enough momentum and you've given yourself a track record then maybe you buy the yearly membership and even with other things like other hobbies there are free dance classes or yoga classes or cardio classes online. And you don't need a yoga mat to try yoga. You don't need ballet slippers to try ballet. You can fully do ballet at home in your socks, not bare feet in your socks. There are lots of things we can do to build a track record for ourselves so then we can you know, prove to ourselves that we can do this thing and then buy the thing eventually even with something like a writing course i've been really interested in this writing course and my promise to myself was if i can write 
every day for 30 days, then I could buy the course and I haven't done it yet. So I'm glad I haven't bought the course even though I want it, but I want it because I feel like it will do great things for me and I'm more interested in the change or how the change will affect me opposed to actually doing the change. And that's something that marketing does so well is it sells us a lifestyle or a result. Yeah, it sells us a lifestyle or a result and we might not think what it will take to get there or make a commitment or a plan to get there. And so for this category, as I mentioned, it's not a categorically bad category. I really believe that if any of these changes in this category are coming from an I hate myself place, the change you want to make probably won't stick. And if this is the perspective that the change is coming from, it could also feel like punishment. And then I also think that it fits more into the fix ourselves camp opposed to making a positive change. I understand that buying things to make changes in our lives isn't a black and white issue. And, or it's just not entirely black and white. It's not that all purchases are bad or good. I think it really depends on the perspective or mindset that you hold and the intention behind the practice or the change that you're trying to make. And we, we can just as easily buy a program or a book out of desperation just as easily as we might have bought that blazer. And it can also just be desperation to not be us and to just be somebody else or just hating who we are so much. In the past, like in my early 20s, I have hate lost weight and I also want to lose weight to look like other people. Like I want to look like her. Meanwhile, even if I weighed the exact same amount as her, I would not look the same. I have never felt good after hate losing weight. Like that's just not a good mental space to be in. Hating ourselves and wanting to make changes out of hate is just, I think, a bad place to be in and does nothing for our mental health, our positivity, our contentment, or our overall like a positive outlook on life. If hating ourselves into making changes worked, and berating ourselves or belittling ourselves or talking so much shit and negativity about ourselves, if any of that worked, we would have done and accomplished whatever we were wanting to do. And also, just because you accomplished a thing doesn't make you happy. If you lose the weight, are you happier? No, because you never had a good mindset in the first place. You were never like happy with your body or yourself in the first place. I do think that if you hate yourself into making a change, you won't love yourself after. And so I feel like changes to ourselves need to come from a place of love and self-admiration and overall care for our bodies. And just because you weigh a certain amount doesn't mean you have to lose it. It doesn't mean you have to gain weight. I mean, I would love for us to think about other things other than our weight. And our weight doesn't have to define ourselves or our self-worth. I don't think we'll be happier after the change if our change was like hate motivated. If you weren't happy before, why would you be happier after? I think we often believe that changing ourselves will make us happier. Like if we lost weight, we would just be happier. I don't know, like if we had, let's say people liked me more, I would be happier. But it doesn't matter if people like me more, I don't like me. And so I think that there is something to be to be said about making changes to ourselves for the better and them coming out of a place of love and kindness but something for me like confidence i don't hate myself um i do have a desire to be more confident because i can see the benefits of that in my life you know going forward i can see how that could possibly impact myself and so the desire to have more confidence is coming from a place of like i want to be the best me not like you fucking suck you're the worst you don't have any confidence nobody likes you i mean i have self-talk like that in the past it's the making those changes out of self-loathing or negativity that is what really hinders us because it's the mindset friends we can't hate ourselves into being happy and if our changes come from hate self-loathing all of that we won't be happy afterwards it is hard to be happy with ourselves and who we are but we need that to find personal contentment. And so I urge you, if you wanna make changes in your life, that one, you do them from a place of self-love, like damn, you deserve it. You deserve to be confident. How do I make that happen for you? I know I said it, but I wanna say it again, okay? I wanna say it again, I wanna repeat myself. 
if hating ourselves worked, if our negative thought spirals worked, if being really mean to ourselves worked, we would meet our goals and we would be happier, but it doesn't. It just keeps us in this negative prison of self-hate. We just get stuck thinking the same way. So if we want to make a change in our lives, one, we have to do it because we want to do it, not because we want other people to think a certain way about us. But we also need to do it from a place of kindness. I think, you know, when we're when we're thinking about how do I make a change that's positive, let's let's work on our mindsets first let's work on loving ourselves first let's let's do that because listen listen my friends you are you and you will be you for the rest of your life and i will be me for the rest of my life hopefully we will get older hopefully we will age hopefully we will be around and we will be healthy i wish that for all of you and so because you are the only you that you get this is the only body and mind that you will ever get Being ourselves should be a joyful experience. Why would we not want to be happy in our lives? You know, why would we want to go through lives hating ourselves? And I think sometimes we just get stuck in this trap. We just get stuck in the same habits and behaviors that we've had for so long because they are familiar. And I just want to tell you that if you're somebody who like hate talks yourself all the time, who thinks negatively about yourself all the time. We got to do something about that because again, being ourselves should be a joyful experience. I don't want to go through life absolutely hating myself, believing that I need fixing. You are beautiful and special and talented and worthy and enough just as you are. Like you are good enough as you are. We don't need to hate fix ourselves. We, we don't. We absolutely do not. I think I'm just getting caught up in saying the same thing over and over again. This video is really meant to be not about the stuff, but how we think about ourselves, how fixing ourselves and this desire to fix ourselves coming from this negative place really affects our personal contentment. So no, you don't need any new clothes or or new makeup or a new book to fix yourself. You really don't. And if you are looking to make a positive change in your life, one, you're not fixing yourself because you're not broken. Let me just say that loud and clear. And if you do want to make a change, you want to be a better you in a way that's fundamentally good and not because you're flawed, then I encourage you to do that. And I hope it's a joyful experience for you. And when we come to our changes through this positivity, I think we can be more content people. So the next step is like, how do we make being us a joyful experience? That's the kind of question I want to ruminate on instead of how do I fix myself with stuff? Okay, that's enough for me. Thank you so much for watching in today's video. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear any of your experiences. I would also love it if you would subscribe. I would love to have you here. I'm saying love a lot because this video just made me so happy. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.